Welcome back, Tim. Nice to see you. Thanks, Sarah. It's great to be here. Just go going through your 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 results. You you did see sales growth, but it was a little bit worse than expected, and you did lower the profit outlook. So what what is happening from your consumer? Well, it's always good to remember that second quarter for Columbia is uh, the smallest quarter of our year. So. You know, certain numbers can can uh, skew the thing differently occasionally. Um, but what's happening is for us, you know, China is an important market for us. We obviously have concerns about whether or not we'll be able to have our business open there all year. Uh, we also have a solid business in Russia, which is now outside of our uh, revenue estimates. And uh, the, the U.S. dollar is strong. And... Um, you know, most of our currents, most of our businesses outside the U.S. are all dollar denominated, so there'll be some pressure there. And then, you know, we were all talking about what the consumer is likely to do uh, in the future, and so we just wanted to make sure that we were we were reflecting that conservatism. You did see nine percent sales growth in in the U.S., which was which was healthier than the than a lot of parts of the world. Are you seeing a slowdown, a trade down, any big changes? Well, we have solid growth plan for the balance of the year, and, and our expectations are to continue to grow through 23. But, you know, our numbers had been so uh, significant over the last several years that uh, we just wanted to make sure that investors knew where, how we were thinking about the business and, and that we had a, a, a focus on making sure that we were profitable in addition to growing. What about the promotional environment? Are you anticipating that that picks up at all? I ask because it's been all inflation all the time. Yeah, we had almost no promotional activity either between our DTC business or our retailers business as well over the last really 18 months. And so we're, our expectation is that there'll be more of that. So, you know, we're, we're making sure that investors know what our thoughts are in terms of how we approach that. But you are anticipating more promotions. Yes. What about the Sorel brand? Sorel, I should say. The, the, they're very fashionable. I, I have a few pairs of those boots. Growing double digits. What, why, why do you see a distinction in that group? And what does it tell you about what consumers want right now? Well, you know, it's interesting. If we follow the Sorel brand from its our purchase of it, and it was a, a number one winter boot brand for men in Canada. And if we follow the, the acquisition of that brand since we've had it in 2000, uh, it's really been converted into a women's fashion footwear brand, where it's about 70% of our product is women's fashion footwear. And it's, it's all functional, but it's all great looking. And, um, you know, what we found is that Frankly, women buy more footwear than men, and they buy it more year <laughs> I could have told you that. Yeah, well, it's, we're, we're slow learners here in Oregon. So, uh, but it's, it's been a great business for us, very high growth, and the opportunities in that business in a year-round basis are, are enormous. And then what about the supply chain, Tim? You, you have been dealing with issues and bottlenecks before. How, how has it been looking lately, and what do you expect? Well, the, the supply chain issues uh, consistently extend into the this year to 22 and likely have some impact in 23, although we expect it to moderate. Uh, prices on containers are still high. Uh, you know, there's the issue of collusion in, the, in that area where, where all the suppliers, the, the, uh, the steamship companies are, are making sure that they're all together in terms of pricing, hmm. which has been challenging. Um, but we expect that the supply chain issues are still going to persist throughout the rest of this year.